Hello everyone, welcome. I am back with another great hard surface modeling tutorial. This was really interesting because I combined NURBS modeling and uh, polygonal modeling, subdivision surface modeling, whatever you call them. I think it was kind of essential to include NURBS modeling in order to model this kind of shape. And I am really happy with the results. Let me show you the wireframes. So again, that was really interesting. I hope you are going to learn lots of new things from this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Let's start by adding the image planes in. First, I will go to the top view, hit Shift and V, back and select the first image plane. I will select the top one and I will set this to 25%. I will go to the front view, select the other one, which will be the front and the 5% transparency. And the last one, and this one, I'm going to select the side. All right, now we are good to go. I will add a rectangle first. In this tutorial, I will be combining nurse modeling and subdivision surface modeling. So that's why I started with a rectangle. First, I will create a loft object, which will be spline based. Then I will convert this into a polygonal object. So first, let's change its plane to X and Z and play around with the width and height. Move this around, rotate it. After that, I will enable rounding. Then let's go to the right view. Rotate this around. Move it up. And now I will check the front view. This one is already looking fine. I guess we are going to need more height, just a little bit more. Okay, I will duplicate this, hold and control, drag this off, and go to coordinates of that new spline and reset these rotation values. Then bring this down over here and rotate it. Select this back, go to object, and change the width and height. Try to match it as much as possible nice now right view change the height perfect i want this spline to be as rounder as the first one so i'm gonna set this radius to all the way up which is 152.5. Now let's hold and control drag this off one more time. Reset the rotation values and bring this down. Change the width and height. Okay, this is already perfect, perfect around it. Now it is time to add this loft in. Select these all and put them under the loft. I will hit N and V to see the wireframes. Also, let me turn off that work plane. Select the loft and first thing first, I will turn off her segment option and I will bring down my V subdivisions to two so that I will have edges on every spline basically. By the way, this order is really important. So this spline should be at the top and this one should be at the bottom. All right, the next thing I want to change is the organic form option. I want to do that because I want this top part perfectly round, which means that I will need edges that have equally same length. So 
if I enable this, I will exactly get what I want. So after making this editable and putting these under a salivary surface, this part will be perfectly round. All right, now let's check the shape. As you can see, that middle section should be a little different, which means that we need to duplicate the second one, hold down control, drag this up, and move this over here. Then I'm gonna rotate this, select this back, change the width and height. And let's check the other views, right view. I guess we need to rotate this like that. I want to follow the object's flow, shape flow. All right, everything looks great. Now let's enable this. I believe we need to rotate the new spline just like that so that these edges will be perfectly straight. All right, uh, I think we need to change the width just a little bit more. Okay, this should be more than enough. Now let's load, hold down Alt and select Connect Object. I did this because Connect Object welds the points that are very close to each other based on that uh, threshold. So just in case, I will set this to one. And I'm gonna make it editable. Actually, you know what? I will hold down Control, make a duplicate, and hide it, just in case you never know. I will also add this to a new layer, and I will hide it from the Object Manager. So we are not gonna see it, but it will be always in the scene. Anyway, let's make it editable. Delete these selections. Now, first thing first, let's connect these empty points. Right click, grab polygon pen tool, and connect the empty points. And this one. Nice. Now over here. So, this is one of the advantages of having a low poly object. Yeah, that was really fast. Everything is looking great. Now it is time to put this one under the side division surface. Select the object, hold down Alt, and select side division surface. Check the mesh, check the wireframes, everything is looking clear. You may get these sharp edges uh, after making the connect objects editable. Just go to the font tag of the object and turn off use edge breaks. Now I think it's time, it's a good time to add sporting edges. Right click, loop cuts. This one, this one, and the third one. All right, everything is looking great. Now, this part, I want this top section to be perfectly rounded. I am talking about these edges. If I hit Q, you are gonna see that it is not that rounded at all because it lacks a sporting edge. So I will grab loop cuts over here and I'm gonna add this in. So this is before adding this one in and this is after adding this one in. By adding a new Loop cards are created that edge which will uh, support that curve basically. Same here. Get this one in. Nice. Of course, by adding this, I made, made these polygons really tight. So if I enable subdivision surface, these parts these parts will be really sharp and tight. Same here. So we need to find a way to move these away from each other as equally as possible. And I have a great tool for this one. Just to select, just to make it a little bit easier, I will dissolve these edges. Just double click on them and dissolve them. Hold down right click, select these edges. Hold down shift, select these, then these, 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 and these. 
then right click and select equal spacing tool and that's going to be it that action basically slided them away from each other but that doesn't mean that it moved these points so in order to fix them i will select them and move them around to get them more rounder shape same here Okay, now I think we need to double click on that edge. Q. Oh, sorry, I forgot to add these ones back in. Q. Nice. I will select this edge, slide it. Same here. And here, and it lets it queue. I think the bottom should be rounder. By the way, while this edge is selected, I'm gonna right click on one of the axes and select word coordinates. Okay, this is doing great. Now, let's try to. Match the shape as much as possible. I will go to the top view. This select everything, just click off, right click and select brush tool. Make it slightly larger and hit Q and move these points around to, to match the shape. While moving these points, try to follow the objects. Love. Let me hide this for the moment. As you can see, there is a visible seam on the object we are trying to model. So my edges should follow the same flow. So, so for that reason, I will move these edges right on that seam. This is gonna make the further adjustments a lot easier. I mean a lot. Mm, after that point, I guess we should switch back to the move tool because uh, moving this with brush tool may affect the other parts of the object. Like over here, I don't want to change anything on the top. So for that reason, I will just grab these points and move them basically. Click off, check the shape. Now the other panels, like these ones should be over here and these ones over here. Okay, then I'm gonna double click on that edge loop. Hit T and change the X offset to 100% and move them like that. But whatever I do, it's not going to be enough for me to get the exact shape, which means that I will need more geometry. So while these edges are selected, by the way, let me check that edge. It looks weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's select these I'm gonna move them slightly then grab bevel tool change its offset mode to proportional and set the subdivision to one and actually no zero will be enough I guess yeah I can uh, move these edges on that seam and I can move these edges on, on that seam. So let me do undo it, do it one more time. Okay. While these are selected, I will hit T 
and move them over here. Q. I will select is only. Move them like that. Then hit T. Scale them on the X. Okay. Now let's check the mesh. We can slide this like that. Then this one over here. By the way, moving these points with the brush tool uh, kind of messed these edges up. So just double click on them, dissolve them, and add this one back in. Actually, let me undo this because these points aren't looking that good. Let me move them quickly. All right, now I will let this. Sporting edges back. Now let's check out the edge flow. For example, over here, everything is looking great. Maybe we can move that point right on that seam at that one over here. Okay, this part is looking pretty. Good, then this part. So, first, yeah, that edge should be right over here on that seam. So, I'll select this, right click, select slide tool, slide them right over here. Then we can go into points mode and slide this one here. Then that point, I will grab my slide tool and slide this over here, then move it up. Then that point should be over here. Then this one. Then this. I'm going to move this down and move this in. This so views should match, I mean the position of the points should be right on that edge. Same here, it looks fine in this view, but not fine in this one, which means that I need to move this down. This one is pretty good, and this one is also looking fine. So we move this one over here, which means that I need to slide this one over here to have a better flow. Maybe even a little bit more. Then that edge should be right in the middle of that seam. Then I will go into points mode. This time I will move this point over here. And that point should be right on that seam and the other ones should follow it. Check the top view. Mm, I'm gonna go with that is over here. Check the shape from different angles to see any imperfections. For example, that point should look a little, a little off, so I'm gonna slide it, slide the others as well. I'm gonna double click on that loop 
we reset axis rotate it like that just a little bit it q and it's looking great maybe not that part so always check your mesh from different angles for example i don't know if it's coming through the video but there's something going on over here so i'm gonna move this like that that should smooth it out mm, yeah and now this part yeah i think we are good to go next step will be making this subdivision surface editable right now it is set to two but we need to bring this down to one because two is going to be too much for us to handle so one is going to be a great for the last time let me check these wireframes okay this one is looking fine then we have that edge uh, actually what is that oh i guess i need to move that edge to a point and that edge just a little bit more okay that's fine then that section is also looking okay maybe we can bring this down to get a better match let me duplicate this one and hide it and send it to our layer so that we are not going to see it make it editable it's c now it's time to split this object into parts based on based on the seams and uh, also after applying that subdivision surface the top part of the shape became softer i don't want that so i will go back and make a loop selection unl right click click on weight subdivision surface hit q and weight this up nice now i will make it editable now we can get rid of that weight that way we kept the top part perfectly flat so why is that selected i will make a loop selection uh, sorry i will make a fill selection UNF, and split this part out right click split go back to the original one and fill it now let's see yeah we have that seam uh, actually it is not very really uniform i mean the size of that polygon and the size of that polygon are not very really similar so just double click on that loop dissolve it and add a new one but this one will be set to edge distance okay now i will have a much better loop I'm gonna slide this just a little bit more than I will make a fill selection, UNF, right click and split. Go back to the original one and delete these polygons. Now the other seam, uh, yes, that one, just double click on it. Then yeah this part actually let's solo the object yeah we need to slide this so select these edges right click slide tool slide them and let's go into points mode Let's forget this.
I'm going to select that edge and that one, select the map. And that edge should be somewhere around here. Yeah, that's going to be it. Now I will go back to edge mode. Let's find that seam with one. And I believe, yeah, these edges, all time shift. By the way, I am holding control and shift. And that should be it. Let's make a full selection. No, it didn't work. Oh yeah, because I was supposed to select these edges. Yeah, and also this part. Now, if I make a full selection, I can select these. Simply this out, UMP, go back to the original one and delete. I will go back to edge mode, make another field selection, UNF. It is not working yet because I forgot to select this one. And let me slide this for the last time. UNF, UNP, go back to the original one and delete. Nice. Let's not forget to split these out as well. Just double click on the middle edge loop, make a selection, split, go back to the original one, and delete. I'm going to double click on these edges and slide them up so that I will have this gap, especially on this section of the model. I want some space between the components. Not too much though, just a little bit. Same here. And these edges. Okay, now it's time to create that hole. To do that, I will bring in a disk. And then I will go into model mode so that I can select this place tool. And I'm going to click on that edge. Obviously, we need to make it smaller. Then I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to rotate it and set. Rotation segments to eight. It's a great number for creating circular holes. Okay, I guess this is supposed to be somewhere around here. Then I will hold on control, drag this off, and select the place one more time and Let's see, this is supposed to be, yeah, right over here. Then I will hit R. This is already looking pretty good. Right click on these bot objects and select connect objects and delete. I'm going to select for the moment, go into edge mode, grab polygon pen tool, hold down control and connect these edges. Turn off solo mode, select all the polygons, right click, uh, sorry, hit E on the keyboard and right click on one of the axes and select normal and move these up. Then hit the extra tool, enable caps option and extrude these polygons just like that. I'm going to duplicate this because I will need, it, need this object twice. I will select this object, hold down alt, select and put the first disk under this object. Select the bool, enable create a single object and make it editable. Now I will go into points mode, grab polygon pen tool and uh, get rid of these empty points. Hold on control and click on them. 
Okay, I watch these ones. And finally, I can connect these. So I will do the same thing basically on this object. Alt on Alt, select full and put this one under that. Make it editable. Before doing that, enable create single object. Then grab polygon pen tool and clean up the mesh. Here we go. Now I will create a side vision surface generator and put these ones under that. It's gonna only affect the first one, so I should group them. Select them all, hit Alt and G. Obviously, we need some thickness. So let's start off with this one. Select all the polygons. Hit D again, extra tool. Enable create caps options and extra these in. Then let me get a better look. So basically, while these polygons are selected, just delete them because we don't need to have them. There is no reason to have them. Then, by the way, these polygons are inverted. I will right click and select reverse nodes. Hit Q. There is something going on over here, judging from the wireframes. Yeah, we have duplicated points. So I will hit zero on my keyboard, select these points. I have two points. Right click, I will select the weld. And select these points. Okay, this part this is looking fine. Then we need to add these sporting edges. Like this one. Uh, let me change this offset mode to proportional. Q. Nice. And this one, obviously. Perfect. Now, some process on that polygon islands. Hit D. I can apply the same amount of extrusion. Then delete these polygons. Grab lookup tool and start to add these parting edges in. You can hit N and B so that you can. Add these new look cards based on the other object so that they will have similar edge flow. You nice. There is a little bit pinching right over here. It is happening because the length of the, that edge is not very similar to this one. So we need to keep it as equal as possible. So for that reason, let me select that edge and slide this somewhere around here. I need to do the same thing on that object. Solo it, select this, kind of solo, hit N and B so that I can now where to put this here. Yeah. It's Q now. It is looking perfect smooth. Now we need to apply the same amount of polygon thickness on these objects. Select them all. I mean the polygons. Hit D and apply. And remember to delete these polygons inside. Now hit key and L, look cut, and add these in. Great, then let's check out this one. All polygons, Ctrl A, hit D, apply, delete the polygons. Grab loop cut tool and add these loop cuts. I'm gonna hit N and B. Q. 
here. Oops, before get the FS1 in. So you know, let's check out this one. Actually, we are already working on this. So that loop cuts went all the way to the bottom, which we don't like because these are too close to each other, these edges. So if I enable subduring surface, this part will be really tight. We are gonna start to see pinching on the surface. So let's solo this and select the first one, hold down Ctrl and Shift, select the last edge, then get rid of these edges. I'm gonna double click on these edges, including this one, grab slide tool, hold down Ctrl and clone these edges. Then I'm gonna grab polygon pen tool and connect these points. Nice, then another one. Turn kind of solo mode. Nice. Uh, this part of the mouse should be rounder. You know, here, which means that I need to solo this. Grab program pen tool and reduce the amount of two edges over here by merging this. Hit N and B. These are identical, so if I hit Q, we should get a perfect match, basically. And I guess we forget this one, select all the polygons, exit, delete, and add a sporting edge. And that part, I'm gonna make. An offset first, uh, sorry, an inset first. Then uh, my axis should be set to normal and move this up. I will make another inset, then another loop cut over here. Since I don't have anything at the bottom, I need to extrude these in. I will hold on shift to change the angle of these new edges. And add that one loop cut in. Nice. I guess I forgot to add a loop cut over here. Perfect. Now we have a button over here. So I should select these polygons. And I'm gonna make an inset and grab its circle tool. Before applying this, I will enable project to surface. Uh, looks like this needs to be larger than that. So I'm gonna slide these edges to the side. Okay, right click, circle tool. Yeah, we don't need to make any inset. Then, let's see. Now I will make another circle with circle tool. Oh no, I cannot do that because it's gonna affect this one. So let's see. Mm. What if I make an inset? Okay, not bad. I just need to move this array. Select that point. Okay. So let's select these polygons, delete them, then grab polygon pen tool and connect these points. And then we can get rid of these polygons. We can get rid of these as well. Double click, hold down control, extrude them like that. Then the sporting edge, 
Uh, then, then I will make a loop selection, UNL, grab, slide tool, clone these edges, click to. But you know what? Actually, I shouldn't have deleted that point. It is actually holding up that curve. So I'm going to keep this. Maybe I can do this. I know it's a triangle, but it's not going to be a problem since it's a flat surface. Now, let's insert this loop cut, loop selection. Yeah, this is looking much better. Then I will select that loop selection, split these out, select these edges, double click, hold on control. Actually, I, I, I can just move these up. Then right click, close polygon hole tool. And let's try the patch. Nice. And I will just select the top polygons with break selection and I will make an inset and right. here we go now let's try to model the middle mouse mouse wheel I'm gonna change its orientation Okay, something like that will be enough. We can make further adjustments after we make this one editable. Let's solo it. I will hit NNB. Before making this editable, I'm going to increase up the segments to 48. Sorry, 30. Two will be more than enough, and let's set this to okay. Let's keep it like that. Then make it editable. Select these polygons, scale them in. Same here. Then loop cuts. I will open alt and the other surface. I can scale these up. Just around it, just a little bit more. And I'm gonna slide these edges like this. Nice. Now let's set this to one. Let's make it a two. I'm gonna. Make a loop selection, add the selection, and split these out. Go back to original one and delete. And I will do the same thing over here. Split it out, go back, and delete. For these ones, I'm going to delete these edges. Select this one. Select these edges. Leave one edge loop between them. Then scale this up. I want to store these selections. Selection, store selection uh, because I will select these edges. Then hit P, extrude this, hold on shift, change the angle of these new edges, then I can get that loop cut over here and over here, then the other guys. First let's put this one into a new so the new surface hit N and A. I'm gonna hide this for the moment. Select these, extrude them mean take these loop cuts. Same here, double click, hit the extra these in and I hide this one. Nice. Now I'm going to double click on this selection and maybe 
you can scale it. Okay, this is looking great. I can select my null, move this around. Nice. Now let's check out these buttons over here. I'm going to solo it. So first thing first, we need to prepare this object to be um, extruded, especially on this area. So I'm going to, instead of sliding this up, which may deform the surface, I will add temporary edges, like these ones. Then I'm going to select this, slide them up. So that they are going to be right in the middle of these buttons. Then I will select these edges, slide them over here. Then these edges, I'm going to slide them over here. So these ones. So basically, I'm trying to create a square area so that I can make an inset and Use with circle tool. So after applying this tool, this new circle will be will be right on the spot, just a, a little bit off. So I can slide this over here. Make another circle. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay. Now the other side, as you can see, we don't have much over here. So I will try to add new edges. And I believe I should slide these over here. Then these ones should be here. And that's going to be it. Make an inset and hit circle tool. Nice. Now I will grab polygon pen tool and connect these two points. Now all I need to do is select these polygons, hold on shift, and delete them. Now I would go back to polygon pen tool and I will go into points mode and we need to get rid of these temporary edges and just edit. Then we can get rid of that one. That one as well. I'm going to get rid of these edges for the moment. We are not going to need these points because this point is already holding up that curve. What else? Maybe we can connect this one and get rid of that edge and create any path and get rid of this one. Also, these are not connected. Let's do that real quick with Q. Nice. Let's try to do something like that. I know we have an engine over here, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think first we need to extrude these edges. To say something about the surface, hold on control, then in the loop cut, then I will make a loop selection, VNL, grab slide tool, hold on control, hit Q, and then A, and check the surface. And it is looking perfectly smooth, no pinching at all. So sometimes N guns are not the enemy. We can keep them. Now I will make a loop selection, split these out, select these edges, hit E, move these out, then select close polygon hole tool. Mm, that doesn't look very good. Maybe we should stick to the basic one and try to. Connect the enter points by hand. 
and maybe we should get you to is one and i'm gonna go to do this view and it this one would cut in uh, these ones right over here then select these edges move them in then sporting edges and over here i'm gonna make a fit selection and make an inset all right it is time to add our last detail so let me select that object. First thing first, we are gonna need more resolution than we have right now. So I will hold down shift and select all these edge loops. Just double click on them. Then I will right click, select bevel tool, and I'm gonna set my subdivision to one and bevel these out all the way up. So after the point, they should merge. Then I will go into points mode, select all the points, and I'm gonna click on optimize. Now we have enough amount of geometry to add further details. Now I will hold down shift and double click on these edges. Then I will select back the bevel tool. This time I will need zero subdivision. Also, I will set my offset mode to fixed distance so that the top polygons, bottom polygons will have the same uh, size. Okay, now I'm gonna select this one and hold down shift, select. This polygon, I will be doing the same thing. Select the first polygon, hold on control and shift, and select the last one. Uh, actually, I made a mistake. Yeah, not this one. So let's let me select this one more time. There should be one loop between these selections. Okay, let's be careful. All right, now I'm gonna apply the same amount of bevel on these polygons. Select the polygons. Okay, then I will hit M, Z, or we can go to right click, select normal transform and normal move. And basically, I want to push these uh, polygons out. Let's hit Q. Not bad. Maybe. Too much let me push this back just a little bit more no maybe we should keep it like this okay but now what about these edges because since these are very close to each other uh, the shape is not very smooth and considering that these there are two objects right next to each other and this one is perfectly round we need to eliminate these edges i mean we need to move them away from each other to do that i'm gonna select these edges by double clicking on them and that way i will be able to select the top edges as well of course, we need to deselect some of them. So for that reason, I will go to selection and select ring selection, hold on control, and deselect these edges. Now, while these are selected, I will grab a cool spacing tool. Hit Q. And this is looking great. Uh, maybe we should move this back. Yeah, exactly. They are 
sticking out too much. Before we forget to move this out. I think it is a good time to pack these into a single now and get rid of that southern surface. Now I'm gonna select all my objects, hit E, click off, deselect everything and grab branch tool. Uh, actually, now I just need to select these two objects, go into points mode, hit Q, grab back branch tool, and I'm gonna push these points in. I cannot do anything uh, because probably a point should be selected. So I will click double uh, click off. We have back brush tool, push this in. All right, everyone, after adding this. Last detail, I think it is time to wrap up this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something new. I'm gonna put these image planes in the description so you can get them as well. If you have any questions, just, just let me know. And I will see you in the next ones. Thanks again and bye.